So with SIBO, man, I was starting, uh, we actually were working on a compilation that never ended up getting finished called the Mafia Connected Compilation because that's how my one label, Mafia Connected, was originally founded was we were going to do it underneath West Coast Mafia Records. And that was when the whole thing happened with the Mozzie beef where they had beef together over the radio interview and they started making diss tracks. Then there was a shooting that happened at a music video shoot and you know, all that crazy stuff. I'm not really gonna speak on that too much, but uh, you know, it, it got kind of crazy, but you know, shout out to Sebo. He, he a good dude, he's still doing his thing. Eventually we still gonna release that compilation one day. Uh, the thing with the serial killer, actually that happened around the time we were working on the compilation originally. So this dude stretched the monster. He had worked with Willie North Pole. Like he was, he had a lot of potential to get big. He was connected to a lot of big people and he was a phenomenal artist. Um, he had worked with Willie North Pole. He had worked with the Salt Mine Studios out in Arizona where everyone from Lil Wayne to DMX was recording that when they were in Arizona. And he had, we ended up making it, we ended up making him the Four Flavors Worldwide producer. We ended up building a studio in a strip club called Taboo that was only open during the nighttime hours from like 8 p.m. until like 5 a.m. So during the daytime hours, it was a studio. And people like coming up there because every now and then you see the girl walk through there naked getting ready. We up there, you know, you could blow weed up there, you could do whatever you want to do. So we had the studio there. Stretch was pretty much living there at the time. And, you know, I knew he did his uh, his little extracurricular activities. I knew he did a little meth here and there. It ain't my cup of tea, but I wasn't judging him for it because it wasn't an issue at the time. Like, he would just get meth out, and then he would stay up for four or five days at a time, and we'd come in and be like, oh, I made, like, 500 beats. And he'd be sitting there just making beats and writing down tracks and just doing all sorts of, like, music shit for all those days straight. So I'm like, at least he'd be in productive with his addiction, you know? So we ended up losing the studio because the dude sold the club and Stretch kind of wasn't right up for that when he didn't have a studio to work out of. Me and him lost contact for a minute. Then he hit me up when I'm working on the thing with Sibo because he wanted to get on the compilation. So we had him set to get on the compilation. And... He was living out in West Hollywood, said, oh, I'm doing good, man. Everything's better out here. I'm like, cool, I'm happy for you. A couple weeks later, dude hits me up. Hey, I got to dip out of state real quick, but I'm going to be in Sacramento at the Greyhound at this time at like 3 in the morning if you want to meet me over there real quick. And I was like, no, nah, I can't make it over there at 3 in the morning, man. But just stay in contact with me. And then he emails me probably about two albums worth of music. Just unreleased music, some that's got Willie North Pole on it, some that's got Hannibal Lech, whose music's featured all over MTV. Uh, a lot of big name features on a bunch of different stuff. And then a lot of his own solo stuff too. And he says, make sure this gets released. No matter what you hear about me in the news, just make sure this gets released. I'm like, all right. Then I start seeing things about him on the news. They're looking for him. Wanted for a homicide in Hollywood. Killed the dude he was living with out there. Then went out to New Mexico, wanted for a homicide there. And the whole time, I'm actually in contact with him during this manhunt. He goes to New Mexico. Uh, from what the paper said, he kidnapped someone and beat up someone and killed someone out there. And then went out to Texas, killed like a whole family out there, took out, took their car and all that. And the whole time, he's still saying on Facebook, I think my audio cut out there for a minute, but no, nah, but he's like traveling on this manhunt and he's killing people as he's traveling. And the whole time he's still posting on Facebook, hey, I got my mixtape for sale. I'm in this state. I'm in this state. And I'm like, what the hell is dude doing? And he ended up getting caught out in Florida, actually. Daytona Beach. His name was uh, Jason Aaron Gibson. The manhunt ended in Florida. He crashed through in the dead man's car. He crashed through a police roadblock. Then they ended up capturing him. 
and he was extradited back to Texas. He escaped the death penalty by taking a plea bargain. He's serving three consecutive life sentences. After his sentencing and everything was squared away, the Mixtape Killer album was released. That was one of the albums he sent me. It's called The Mixtape Killer. That is on all the platforms. Stretch the Monster, The Mixtape Killer.